So I'm back again, and uh, <laughs> I now get my, my eight minutes of fame. Um, so uh, my name's Joy Todd, and I work across the museums, um, running the Joint Museums Volunteer Service with my colleague Caroline. Um, now, I'm conscious that this is towards the end of a very long afternoon. So um, before I get started on talking about this project called Count Me In, which happened in the spring, um, I just want to play a little game with you. Um, and I, in, uh, I would like to play a game of family fortunes. So get your thinking hats on. Um, we asked 100 people to describe a museum volunteer. And, and by that, I should say that what I really mean is I asked 10 people in my children's playground. Um, <laughs> but what I would like you to do is tell me what they might have said. So can people shout out? Geek. Geek. OK, <laughs> like it. Retired. Retired. Enthusiastic. Enthusiastic, yes. Any others? Let's think about a profile. I imagine there's a police description for this person. Okay. Grey. Grey. Okay. Well off. Pardon? Well off. Well off. Women. Women. Okay. Any more? Art history degree. Art history degree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shall we see whether you were right? I don't know what the sound effects are for this, but I, I, I don't think you'll get any ears here. So um, these are kinds of things that people said. Um, now, I don't think that there's anything wrong with those uh, descriptions. There's very good reasons for why the typical museum volunteer might come across as being um, described like that. Um, but let's have a quick look to see what the actual picture is in the, museum of, uh, in the museums that we're in at the moment. So, again, this data, uh, you're not going to be able to read it, so don't worry too much about that. It's really there just to show you that there are some real hard facts behind this. I've been doing my research. Um, so, um, there's about 460 museum volunteers that I know about. I'm sure there's plenty more, but the ones that I know about, um, this is the profile, really, of them. So, um, on the top left, this is all about employment status um, and, and really uh, uh, their background. Uh, it, it's quite mixed. In fact, we've only got about 20% retired uh, in, our, in our team, um, but they are very, very educated. So, they've got lots of people from the university, as expected, lots from other universities. Um, largely female, 83% female. Largely white European origin, um, about 90%, with 10% coming from other places. Um, and then uh, in the bottom left-hand corner, that's looking at ages. And actually, there's quite a decent spread there across the different ages. And, and unusually for many museums, we have over 50% of our volunteers between the ages of 18 and 34. So, not too bad. Um, but why should any of this matter anyway? Well... Um, especially if, for example, you know, they're actually they're just providing what the museums want. They're providing energy, enthusiasm and the, the skills that the museums need. Why do we care what they're about? Well, there's various reasons for that. <coughs> uh, I think earlier on, Antonia and Helen were talking about uh, Oxford and how it actually had a very different and, and diverse set of people living here compared to this profile that we have up here. And I think that's quite important, because if we're trying to uh, increase our audiences and, in, and, and attract audiences that don't necessarily visit at the moment, then really we should be reflecting those types of people in our volunteer force. Wouldn't it be wonderful if, as you walked through the door of a museum, that you found somebody there, you met somebody there, who you felt was like you, and who came from the place where you came from, or felt you did? Um, the other thing is that we know that volunteering brings benefits to those that do it. We know that people who volunteer are more likely to have better mental health and well-being outcomes than those that don't. We also know that volunteering gives you transferable skills and opportunities um, to other uh, cultural areas, to other um, lines of work. Um, it gives you something for your CV. But volunteering is a privilege. To be a volunteer, you need to have a lot of time. You need possibly some wealth. You need some confidence, some cultural capital. Um, and so, you know, it's not open to everybody. Those, out, those positive outcomes aren't open to everybody. 
Now, alongside these 460 active volunteers that I know about, I also have about 500 people who signed up to my website saying that they're interested in volunteering. Now, most of my volunteers work use, uh, doing public engagement activities. They're working with visitors in our galleries, um, making their visit more interesting. Large, large numbers of people want to work behind the scenes, but we have far fewer opportunities available there. And when they do come up, they are hotly, hotly contested. So if you are somebody who wants to learn more about work, working in volunteers, but doesn't really have the confidence to come and even dream to volunteer in a prestigious institution like a museum, how are you going to get uh, in? So that's what brought us to try this pilot project which we called Count Me In, um, and it happened uh, in a Museum of Natural History. So we had a, a, a money from uh, Aspire, which was largely spent on a project officer who was going to support this project, and we worked in partnership with Oxford County Council. The aims of our project was to try and, and provide another route into volunteering for those that would experience that barriers to volunteering. The types of things I'm talking about are possible physical dis uh, disabilities, mental health dis disabilities, simple lack of confidence. Um, we targeted people who were on benefits and unemployed in this, in this project. And the, aim, the carrot for them was that we were going to hopefully give them some transferable skills that they could take somewhere else. They will also get an accredited course, uh, a, customer skill, a customer service skills course, which again they could put onto their CV. And we also hoped that we would find new ways through doing this pilot to support volunteers who did have extra support needs at the Museum of Natural History. So how do we recruit? Well, uh, we had a bunch of flyers which we sent out to the, the kinds of organisations that you list there, um, with mixed results to start with. Um, probably our most successful method of uh, recruiting people to this course was actually via word of mouth. Um, I, I, I manage and, and work with two uh, excellent community education officers who go out um, to about 200 different organisations um, every year, uh, places such as this, um, taking out objects to people who would not otherwise visit the museums. And, and so they were finding that it was them telling people, oh, you were, this project's going on, um, you must come and do it, that, that brought people in. And then finally, job, the Job Centre uh, really did help there. The project itself took place over three sessions. Um, there was a, a, a customer service course, as I mentioned. A uh, key part was a placement um, either in a collections uh, area, uh, an operations area like front of house or the shop, or crucially object handling with the public. And then uh, the final morning was really bringing the two sessions of the previous day together. So it had a pastoral element, looking at their own personal development and uh, where, what uh, their goals were uh, and what types of skills they'd picked up and where they would go with those. And we also had, um, thanks to a lot of staff here um, in this room, um, excellent e museum expertise brought in as well. An example of the kinds of things they did behind the scenes, uh, this is in the entomology department where they sorted out a drawer um, this is a, a way of getting them in. They, they could uh, sort out this drawer first and be observed in how they looked after specimens, um, what their prior knowledge was, what kind of confidence they had, and then that helped, them, that helped the staff support volunteers do the real thing with field specimens afterwards. This was an object handling session, so three, three of our participants here um, uh, showing off objects to uh, the real public. The thing that they had the most anxiety about, the thing that we have the most number of volunteer opportunities um, in our museums. And probably where I saw the biggest change. So we had one person who, ha who had Asperger's syndrome who was very monosyllabic for the first half of the course and was very, very anxious about doing this particular placement. By the end of the course, he, we couldn't get him off the floor. He was saying, I'm loving this, bring it on. And he was excellent at engaging with the public. The concrete outcomes of the course, um, the, we, we did have four people come um, who are now volunteers with us, um, but, but not just that, people had other outcomes for themselves. So overwhelmingly, the nine people that completed the course had uh, you know, 
they had real improvements in confidence. Uh, and what I'm really pleased to see is that two people came along to do volunteer buddy training, another output of this project, which is a, a, a method we're, we're trying to use to help support new volunteers who might have support needs. So I leave you just with a few of their comments, um, because I think that they, they speak better than I can about the value of doing this kind of work. Thank you.